A South Korean lawmaker has stated on Wednesday that the South's National Intelligence Service has advised that North Korea has sent war supplies to Russia and possible personnel to operate the weapons. North Korea is sending not only troops to Russia but also additional war supplies. It has been confirmed that after sending artillery shells and missiles, North Korea has additionally exported long-range artilleries such as 170mm self-propelled artilleries and 240mm multiple rocket launchers to Russia, said Lee song Kuyen, speaking from Seoul. The South Korean assessment came after Russia warned Monday that U.S. President Joe Biden's decision to let Ukraine strike targets inside Russia with U.S.-supplied longer-range missiles adds fuel to the fire of the war. U.S. officials said Biden's decision almost entirely was triggered by North Korea's entry into the war. Lee also told reporters that the NIS assessed those weapons are the type of artillery that the Russian military doesn't operate so that North Korea likely dispatched personnel who would teach the Russians how to use them and handle their maintenance work. And 파악이 되었습니다. 북한이 포탄 미사일에 이어서 170mm 자주포와 240mm 방사포 등 장사정 포까지 추가 수출한 사실이 확인이 되고 있습니다. 그리고 이들 무기들은 러시아가 기존에 사용하지 않는 그런 무기들이기 때문에 운용 교육이라든지 정비를 위해서 북한 병력도 함께 파견되었을 가능성이 높다라고 보고 있는 상황입니다. A group of relatives of Ukrainian prisoners of war gathered at a rally in Kiev on Tuesday to remember their loved ones as the full-scale Russian invasion reached its 1,000th day. Teshiana Mosul's husband was taken alongside 75 others on the first day of the full-scale invasion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. You can say that our lives have stopped, Mosul said as she gathered with others at the rally. Without our close ones it simply stopped. At the Maidan Memorial dotted with flowers and flags, Helena Sayenko, a 66-year-old internally displaced resident of Donetsk region, stood in reverence. I never expected Putin to do such a terrible thing, to his brotherly Ukraine, she lamented. Post-worker Valentin, meanwhile, surveyed a flag memorial commemorating soldiers who died defending Ukraine in Kiev's central Independence Square. Before Russia's invasion, this was an ordinary green lawn in the heart of Ukraine's capital. Tourists would visit to take photos, and locals would stroll there on weekends. But 1,000 days of war have transformed it into a makeshift memorial, dotted with blue and yellow flags each honoring a soldier who died fighting Russia. Many were volunteers who left their civilian lives behind to answer to defend their country. Their loved ones, left alone with grief, hope their sacrifices won't be forgotten. They plant small, simple flags, hand-marked with the names and dates they died. Over time, the flags have multiplied, fluttering in the wind as the seasons change and the war drags on. For a longer perspective, I don't make any plans, he added. We are still waiting for our victory, otherwise it will be a catastrophe. As the war continued, the place has transformed. The grass has faded away, replaced by well-worn paths resembling those in a cemetery, winding through thousands of flags. Among them, many portraits have appeared brought by relatives showing confident, smiling faces in military uniforms.
Даже можно свою родную страну, Украину, да, с Москвы так бомбить. Можно? С-200, С-300 и град на людей посылать без защиты. Это ж нельзя так. Я говорю, Путин, я никогда не ожидала этого, что вы такую гадость делаете родной Украине. Ну, без планов, как бы, не можно. План на 2-3 дня <laughs> обовязково я. Не дуже майбутнє велике, поки що не Поки що чекаємо, коли ми переможемо, бо інакше буде.